Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. says the ramble must be true then and we're here until midnight tonight on the east coast of the united states ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen it, j- lady, lady, j- gentlemen and the germs but, uh, hello Stephen pearl wake up you're on wake up oh thanks that was my manager morty steinberg Balowitz. okay yeah jewish man in the world got circumcised every year for his birthday now, hello have you, have you ever had a manager Yes, and I usually did worse in my career than when I didn't have a manager. So I don't have to make a phone call and say, "Can I work here this week?" So, yeah. I uh, I had a um, I had a manager. I've always had a business manager, Gary. You know Gary, uh, but he's a business manager. He does the books. He da da da. He pays my yeah, taxes Gary. and oh, things Gary. like that. Okay, but I did get. I never got an agent because uh, I never uh, I never was in a situation where I needed an agent. Uh-huh. That I always, I was always working. You know, I, I'd leave one job, somebody else would offer me another one. That yeah. was for a, a certain period of my life, folks. But times change. All right. So, uh, I uh, uh, finally, when I had this big deal going on at Live One Hundred Five, I took on an agent, and he then negotiated my contract, which wasn't uh-huh. as much as I really felt I should have gotten. And uh, for, for three years, he was like an agent. And then it came to a point where the station decided they wanted to get rid of me. So he was representing somebody else, so he suggested them. Oh, my <laughs> nice. It was Johnny Steele. And oh, I went, I went, I went, are you, I, we, we called him up and we said, are you out of your mind? You're an agent. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't sit there. <laughs> and negotiate out of one contract into another contract in the same situation. So he had to turn it over to a friend of his to negotiate for Johnny. But that's all this guy ever did for me. And the real money I made really was Gary, my business manager, made a deal with the station. They wanted me to do all these live commercials, right? And whenever I would do the live commercials, he negotiated it that they would owe me a certain amount of money per commercial. Wow. They would pay me $50 a live commercial. So in a given day, I could have four commercials. That's 200 bucks there. Over wow. a week, that's $1,000. Yeah. Over a year, that's $52,000. And Gary got that for me, and that's what put us over the top money-wise. Uh-huh. You know, not this fucking agent who was a big loser, I'm telling you. Yeah. So I, you know, but I never had any guy that really believed enough in me to, you know, to be an agent for me. You know, so. They're usually there if you get a job, they're there to then maintain it for you. Yeah, they're like dancers. Who needs them? Yeah. I mean, if you've got the job, why do you need an agent? That's right. I have no idea. Right. Why. Yeah. I don't need one. Well, I'm not doing anything now. It's like, who's what's... 10% of a zero. Uh, but I was never I was never big enough that people were coming to me and going, oh, we want to be your agent. Oh, we can. I did have one guy. You're going to love this. You're going to love this story. So I am doing this thing. Believe it or not, I and uh, two other guys, and one of them was named Block. He became a producer over at the, uh, the, 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 the uh, Carson show. Uh-huh. Uh, they... Um, I came to them with a, with a book that I'd had a guy on by the name of Ashley Montague, right? Uh-huh. Who who wrote a book called The Elephant Man. Yeah. And I said to Montague, I said, if I can find somebody to do this, could I could I get the rights to the movie, rights to it? And he said, sure, be happy to. And basically, it was a bi- it was a biography of uh-huh. this guy in England who sure. looked like war- warmed over oatmeal. Exactly. Uh, like Calibrin. And so we had the rights to that, these guys. Well, these guys also knew an agent and said, we really got to get you an agent. 
okay? So they take me into this guy's office, and I've got hair down to here, right? Uh -huh. I'm in jeans and a fringe jacket. This is how, what time period of time it was, right? And I walk in, and we sit down, and I talk to the guy for a little bit, and then they sit down, and they kind of whisper back and forth to each other. You know, and I'm going, what's going to happen here? Am I going to get an agent or am I not going to get an agent? And the guy turns around and looks at me and says, you know, if you'll cut off the, the facial hair and cut your hair short yeah. and wear a suit, fit in, I can get you a job hosting a game show. Yeah. And I looked at him and I said, you have no idea what I do. <laughs> for a living. Yeah. <laughs> and I got up and walked out. That was the, the, the first time and the last time I ever actually, outside of that time I needed one in San Francisco to negotiate for me, had any kind of an agent approach. Uh -huh. wow. We can get you a game show. I'm going, yeah. oh, that's perfect for me. You know, yeah, sure. <laughs> you could have been Alice Trebek. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And the answer is John F. Kennedy, Hank Williams, and Jane Mansfield. Oh, uh, yeah. three people seatbelts wouldn't have helped. Ding, ding, ding. Da, da, da. By the way, have you seen him lately on Jeopardy? Because they brought Jeopardy back. Oh, here. are they propping him up now? Or what's huh? going on? I don't watch, I haven't watched Jeopardy since Art Fleming and Don Pardo were on. So. No, they, uh, he, uh, he's not looking great. No, well, he, he's, he's looking kind of, puffy. He's looking puffy. Yeah, exactly. Like they're giving him too much. Remember when Jerry Lewis got puffy? Oh God, that was oh that was grotesque. That was horrible. Why, Dave? But you remember what that was from? Oh sure, man. It was from prednisone, I think, or something they gave. Uh, oh well. And and what oh, it does, it retains nasty. water, and you get the you get this distorted look. Yeah. It's what happened. Um, Gary Coleman, remember Gary Coleman? Oh, I met Gary Coleman once. Most people don't remember Gary Coleman because he's dead now. But he was on what what show was on? Uh, Different strokes. Different strokes. And the guy always looked, even at 30, he looked like a kid. Oh, yeah. Like and the reason problem. was he was missing a kidney. So they gave him yeah. all these this stuff, you know, and uh, they, uh, they gave him pills. And he looked that way because of the pressure uh, zone. Yep. Uh, so Jerry Lewis really got to look grotesque. And when he stopped doing the pressure zone, he went back to being Jerry Lewis. Uh-huh. Or, you know, kind of Jerry Lewis. Yeah. Yeah, boy, he got normal again. Yeah, he, boy, he was amazing, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So sure, everything. Yeah. So you're not working. We always talk about this. I always say, where are you working? And he goes, nowhere. Where, where, nowhere. Where my living room. My, sometimes the bedroom, sometimes the living room. Last time we had room. you on, you had two friends there, and one of them seemed to be she was acting as your manager. Yeah, she should be. That's Linda. That's Linda Marcus Smith. She's a comic. She's military. God bless her. Yeah. And uh, and uh, she and uh, she gets stuff done. She found me this guy who lives in my car who can help me. So I don't have to pay a mechanic ten thousand dollars. I just have to pay him nine. Well, you're pretty bad, much a pathetic human being who can't do anything for yourself. Right? Oh God, no! I know what I'm on my cars. I know how to drive yeah. one. I know how to pull one over. And when something goes wrong, I know how to almost call somebody to fix it, and I usually get taken. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, it looks like uh, your, your tire, the air hole, the air cap was missing, so we had to replace the range. What's the wrong with my car? Well, there's no air in your tire. Now, that's only an expert opinion. But that's okay. There's no tires either. But I <laughs> Make a deal on a car. Well, Use what's car. wrong with your car? <sighs> first, that was the radiator, and uh, that when it was over. Wait a minute. First of all, let's, let's establish how old a car this is. 2006 Honda CRV. Oh boy. Okay, go ahead. Got 200,000 miles on it. But yeah, I, I think that may be your problem. When I bought it, and it still has a CD player and a cassette player. That's that's when I bought the car, and uh, and I, I, that's one reason I bought it. Hey, it has a cassette player. I don't have to throw out my 10,000 cassettes I made in the 70s. So uh, it, it now it won't start. Something else is wrong. I had a AAA guy here yesterday. And uh, he said it had something to do with the gasoline flow or so. I don't know what the hell it is. So who knows? Probably gas pump. Uh, it's, yeah. it's something else. It's something else than it was before. But I, uh, the first thing, the first guy that came over did a lousy job. It was a place called Your Mechanic. They come over your house. Don't use them. They suck. They're horrible. They overcharge. They fuck you up. And the mechanics are blind. Stevie Wonder would have done a better job. Stevie Wonder. Do it once in my life. So uh, don't use your mechanic there. If I, something happens to me and I die, the people at your mechanic did it. I had a thing a couple of weeks ago. I've never had this happen. And it really pissed me off. Is this guy, and we had a washer. We have a washer dryer here, combination. Yeah. And it was leaking. 
So he comes in and he looks and he says, it, oh, it, it needs a new uh, pump. Yeah. Right? We said, well, it just so happens that my, my uh, super said it looks like it probably would be the pump. And we went online and bought a pump for this particular. So he says, well, let me look at the pump. The pump. And he, he looked at it. And then he looked it up and he said, yeah, this is the pump for it. All right. He said, I can replace it 400 bucks. Uh-huh. I said, 400 bucks. I already got the pump. But anyway, we'll go with it. And he's very nice, you know. And then he puts it in, and he has to put in another piece uh, for that was going bad, which uh, was maybe where the leak was actually coming from. But anyway, he says, now, if anything goes wrong, give me a call. Uh-huh. Okay. So a couple of weeks ago, all of a sudden, we see it's leaking again. Uh, and we call him up, and he says, not my problem. I, I, we, I, we didn't get the pump from the company. I'm not responsible for it. I said, wait a minute. You, you, you told us, you know, give me a call if there's a problem. Well, yeah. I'm going to have to charge you a consolation fee. I didn't say I'd fix that. I just said, give me a call. Yeah, you just said, give me a call. I give never, me a call. You gave me a call. Now here's the bad I news. never had anybody in my life, even the worst con artist, refuse to yeah. come over and take a look at it. Yeah, sure. You know, to see what <laughs> Bring it, it over is. here. Turns out it hasn't leaked since, so we have no idea where the leak was coming from. But it hasn't uh-huh. leaked since. But, I mean, I, I you expect, that especially, you know, with mechanical things. I mean, come on, you and I are Jews. Okay, what do we know about me- about mechanical things? The thing I'm a jig and the gizmo aren't working, so I got to touch the what you call it. Those th- that I know. That I know the what you call it from the yeah. doohickey. Exactly. I know how to try it. That's it. Yeah. I never learned. I, never, I know how to be funny most of the time. I I know, know I know how to use a car. I just don't yeah. want to know how it works. I could yeah. care less. All yeah. right. So you rely on these people. Mm-hmm. And when they don't come through for you, yeah. you, know, you you really feel, you know, you're 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 in bad shape that yeah. way. You know? I mean, I often wonder about doctors. How do you know your doctor's right? Uh, you, you know, live. because let's be honest, folks. A doctor only has to get 70% of the questions right. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he could have flunked kidney. For all you know, he could have flunked kidney. And now you're oh, in the... Right on. It was the appendix on the left side or the right side. I forget. He, exactly. But he, he only had to answer 70% of the questions correctly to become a doctor. Yeah. I go to the Hempstead Medical College where the students operate on me under the tutelage of someone who uh, was a fourth year medical student. Really? Do you? No. <laughs> no. Are you crazy? I don't I, think well, a, I know a guy. I had a comedian Barbara I knew. College. I'm trying to remember the comedian now who uh, went to, had, had bad teeth. So he went to the dental college uh-huh. and had it done uh-huh. there. And it was almost, I think it was like they charged a minimal, minimal fee. Yeah, okay. yeah, I've done that. I did that in San Francisco when I was a uh, but, broke, but broke. it it worked great because yeah. every one of these dentists who were working on you had a dentist standing behind him. Oh yeah, breathing down their neck. No, no, a little to the left. But you broke. do that, do this, you know, and whatever. And he said, yeah. uh, they they did. They fixed my teeth up. It was terrific, yeah. you know. And right. everybody used to joke about, oh, what are you doing? Getting your teeth done at dental college? Yeah, sure. Well, you know, it, it, it could be worse, you know, and maybe if you go to a, a hospital that's a teaching hospital, you've actually got a guy operating on you. He's got some guy standing in back of him who's got 100 years experience saying, no, that's the gallbladder. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, so, you know, you, you hope that it'll be uh, be taken care of OK, uh-huh. you know, but so you, where did you go to have it done? Uh, what my op- my my surgery my yeah. procedures yeah. oh the at Summerlin Hospital. How'd you pay for? It? How'd you pay for? Better neighborhood. I have insurance. Ha oh, ha Didn't cost me a cent. Hello peasants. How are you? Did you? Ha- I, I yeah. got complete medical and dental. So thank God. And Nevada takes care of you if you're broke. So you know. Well, oh oh really? Really? I don't want every hobo riding the rails to come here, but you know uh, they they took care of me. So you know. Really? I had my dental. I had this tooth is a cap. I went without it for a year. I looked like a crackhead. And they replaced that for nothing. And well, because uh, I belong, I belong to SAG after, and they just screwed with our health plan. And now, it, and even people like uh, uh, the oldest guy in the union, Norman Lloyd, who's 105 years old, had his it, had his insurance taken away from him. Oh my God, that's horrible. That's, because that's cold-hearted, man. During a pandemic. See, I know. Because Jesus. they said you you have to earn so much money now. 
in order to get insurance. We're going, it's a pandemic. Nobody's working. Jesus Christ, you're not in good hands anymore. Ugh. Yeah, so, but we had a great plan until they screwed with us and yanked yeah, it out from underneath us. So. All right, right. So it's, it's know. Uh, you know, and I'm an old man. I need my insurance. I need, a hey, 100 years ago. I'm lucky I have Taft care. Okay, well, if tell, I get sick, I have to eat. Let's finish like we always used to finish these interviews in the old days. Tell us where you're playing. I'm playing nowhere, ever. Pandemic. <laughs> I'll be appearing in my living room watching the Brock commercial going, <laughs> and uh, that's about it. I'm going to be at Uncle Funny's Chuckle Hut next Uncle week. Uncle Funny's Chuckle Hut in Ron Konkuma. You're hosting Ron Konkuma with the roast in Ron Konkuma. Mm -hmm. This week we'll have Irving the Prairie Thumb. I think I actually did know a club named the Chuckle Hut. The Chuckle? There probably was. Yeah. It was like Barn and bananas and wackies and uncle goofies. Yeah. And, anyway, yeah. it, let's talk uh, next week, okay, Stephen? Out of my friend, ladies and gentlemen, that's Stephen Pearl. He's playing Thank absolutely you. nowhere near you. Hey, you can do it in your house here. God bless Soupy Sales. Good night. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, okay, there he is. That's uh, Stephen Pearl. We love Stephen. Who doesn't? You know, he's fun. I love I love those people I have on. I love Bubbles, and I love him. And Durst, boy, do I miss him. I've got to I've got to get a hold of uh, Debbie, his wife, and see how he's doing. I check in with her about once a month now, just to say, hey, you know, is it is it getting any better? Let me turn on the lights here. That would help, wouldn't it? Okay, now I look. I <laughs> see. I look twenty years younger now. Okay, I forgot to turn on the lights. There's always something I forget to do. Okay, uh, let me see here. Let me uh, let me go to. Let me bring some people into the Zoom. If you want to Zoom us, uh, go over to gabnet.net. That's our website. And you'll be able to uh, see us, uh, where you, how you can get here. Over on the right-hand side, on the far, the column on the right-hand side, in the middle of the page, it says, click here for Zoom. You just do that. And that's how you, how you call us. That's how you get on with us. It's that easy, okay? It's not difficult at all. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? Jeff is here and Charlie's here. Happy birthday, Jeff. <laughs> oh, it's Jeff's birthday today? Yep. 74? <laughs> huh? Wait a minute. Turn on your microphone, you old man. Uh, wait, this? 75. 75. Okay. Well, wow. you could you could have just stuck with 74 and been happy with that. You know? I have believed it. I don't know. I'm tired all the time. I get up and I'm just tired all day. I think it's I think it's it, it's either it's it's being stuck indoors for all this time. And even though I go out for a walk now, it's I'm still tired. Okay? But uh uh you know, then I do the show and it wakes me up and then uh, uh and then I can't go to sleep. So, you know, it's, thank you guys for doing that for me. Uh let me see here. Uh so anyway, um let me see here. Um, anything that I have to say that's important? No, nothing. I have. Any of you have anything important you have to say? No. no. Okay. Well, then, thanks for being see here. See you later. We'll see you later. <laughs> that's right. Talk to you next month. <laughs> I wish all the shows were this short. Yeah. Anyway. Hmm. Uh, let me see here. Uh, first of all. Did anybody see? <laughs> anybody see uh, what's his name? The uh, uh, our 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 doctor, the big doctor, um, Fauci. Fauci. Did you see him with uh, uh, Rand Paul today? No, I heard about it. He read him the riot act. So I hear. He just put him in his place. He and he looked mad too when he did it. Rand Paul went, you know, man, 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 and the guy, by the way, Rand Paul's a doctor. He should yeah. know better. All right. Yeah. And he's going, bam, 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 bam. And, uh, you know, right. how do we know the herd immunity and blah, 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 blah. And finally, Fauci said, Mr. Mr. Rand, I think he called him Senator Rand. <laughs> he said, um, I'm sick and tired of you with this 
same thing all the time. He said, yeah, but you look at New York City and look, they had uh, 30,000 deaths, more deaths than any single country in the world. I mean, come on. And uh, Fauci said, well, New York managed to turn it around and get it going the other way. And he said, you know, and then Rand Paul said, you know why they were able to turn it around? Because with all those people getting sick, they got herd immunity. Oh. And that just, oh, that, that just took Rand Paul and made him apoplectic. Okay? And he said, no, you're wrong. He said... Only 22% of the people got COVID during that period of time in New York State. 22%. That is not enough to establish herd immunity. Go to any doctor, go to any a lot, uh, in, uh, doctor who knows science, and they will tell you 22% is not enough to establish herd immunity. So quit constantly bringing that up. Now, Rand Paul is a doctor. He should know better. Republican well, comes first. Ophthalmologist, I think. Is it, was he an ophthalmologist? Yeah, oh. he's an eye doctor. Oh, okay. Well, then he's perfect to be the Surgeon General under the... <laughs> yeah. Did you hear that? I think one of the people who's now one of the heads of the, the uh, president's uh, COVID commission or whatever... Uh, really has never had any experience in immunology right. yeah no experience at all and all the other people who do on there are thinking of quitting because they can't stand him yep boy we're you know what a mess what a mess this mm -hmm. is getting we just gotta survive till january 20th huh so we just have to survive till january 20th well, hope, here's, here's the scenario, my friend. I mean, Trump is actually saying this, okay? He's not playing coy about it. He says, well, you know, I'm glad we're going to have a good Supreme Court there because there's going to be a big fight after the election. Yep. So he's already set the whole thing up. He's going to claim all the mail-in ballots and the blah, 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 blah. And while I don't know if he's going to get a Supreme Court to agree with him, it's going to muck up the whole works. And he said, you know, this is going to be a disaster, this election, because of these mail-in ballots. Well, it's going to be a disaster because he's going to make it a disaster. Yep. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, he, whoever he does appoint must recuse themselves from any decision about this election. Otherwise, it's going to look like he, he was paid off to... Uh, to, you know, with this Supreme Court nomination to acquit Trump of anything that, in other words, he was paid off to rig the election. Well, That's I mean, I'm sure right like. now she, because I think it's going to be a woman, it's going to be a woman, mm -hmm. uh, uh, has been asked for her loyalty. Yeah, yeah. so how is that? How, she's got to recuse herself. She can't make an unbiased ruling. I don't think uh, the other two guys can either. Do you? No, I don't either, yeah. You know. Are you taking bets that that's going to happen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no. No, the Republicans have no my money. Let me, get my, let me get my wallet before you answer that. <laughs> right, yeah. well, well, you were in the my you, wallet home. You yeah, were, right. You, you were into gambling, right, Robert? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yes. What do you mean, yeah, sure? Of course you were, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, one time. Are you still doing I'll that? You're good at no, it. No, I retired this year, in fact. Really? And and you yes, came out the thirty eight years. You came uh, you came out ahead. Oh yeah yeah. Oh more, you were good more, at it huh? More than ahead yes. Oh oh okay. All right hello hello John Larkin. Hey hey. <laughs> you see our our Fuhrer today on the TV? <laughs> yeah. I stayed away from him today. Yeah I mean, uh, I'm well I'm getting to the point where I just you know Marjorie is getting really depressed about mm. all of this okay uh here comes dave struck dave struck has called us before i believe i'll probably notice him yeah i know who he is hi dave how are you can you hear us dave i can now can okay. you hear me yeah i can hear you just fine how are fantastic. you fantastic oh get this cat off of me <laughs> oh okay you don't like playing with pussy well okay. <laughs> right in my face when i'm trying to talk to other people it gets a little 
There was gets a, a little hairy. You know it, what I'm saying? It was oh. pussy right oh, in your man. face. I, I know the feeling. Um, <laughs> I don't anymore. I've been married too long. You've been married Sorry. too long. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, it, 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 you were saying about uh, watching the president today, John. Was yeah, he's that just flat out saying I'm going to steal the election? He just, all you know, but admits what he's going, going to, to do. Get rid of the fucking ballots. Who needs fucking ballots? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know uh, the problem with ballots. By the way, in case he wants an excuse on that one, is you don't know where they were printed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and and how many of them go out in English? You know, uh, 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 he. I could. I felt he was setting the whole thing up months ago when he started complaining mm-hmm. about the mail-in ballots. He was looking for some reversible thing he could throw at a court, and he will. He absolutely will. I mean, and I'm telling you, I think his loss is going to be overwhelming. I don't think. Hey, I, I think they'll lose at least 40 states. I've said it here before. Yeah, uh, but uh, be that as it may. Uh, people are lining up to vote in great numbers, and you know they're not Republicans. You know, um, and they are maybe maybe the best representation we've had mm-hmm. in many a year, maybe in history. He <laughs> could just absolutely get trounced, and he'll still go to the Supreme Court with this. You know, he will not take, he said it, he wasn't going to take a loss. Because, oh, the uh, Democrats are fixing the election. Yeah, like, we're good at that. Well, he mentioned years ago that he wanted to be president for life. Yeah. 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 Just last week he said, well, 12 more years. Yeah. Who cares about the Constitution? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, he'll he'll call Putin up and say, how'd you pull it off? Mm. Yeah. 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 And he'll say poison. Poison uh, the opposition yeah. with radiation <laughs> and depression. Yeah, That's yeah. next. If he gets reelected, he will be poisoning journalists. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. And political opponents. Yep. We are, I think, in the worst situation we've ever been in in my lifetime. And, I'm, I'm yeah. you know, I thought I'd seen it all. Listen, I, when I was a teenager, we had that whole McCarthy era, mm-hmm. you know, which was just a blight on our democracy. And I thought that was the worst I was ever going to see. This is pretty much, you know. Noam Chomsky 20 years ago was talking about how we were moving uh, towards fascism a lot faster than pe- a, lot of, a lot of people had any idea about. Yeah. And yeah. here we are. Yeah. You know, yeah. With, I, have pe- I live in Kansas City, and I have people telling me, uh, are people that I know on Facebook saying, if we lose this election, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start shooting some, some liberals. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember, I'm your, remember, I bought you that beer? <laughs> yeah, right, right. That five bucks you owe me. Yeah, we <laughs> could just let that slide. Yeah, let like. it go. Yeah. Hey, hey, no, we're, we're buddies, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, anyway, I'm still waiting. Where, where's, where's, where's some of our regulars tonight? Hmm. I mean, I have these are our regulars and a non-regular, Dave. Shuck. They're probably waiting for indictments in the Breonna Taylor case. Yes, probably. I, I, I uh, yeah. I, I've got an Airbnb, and our people canceled tonight because they were so frightened about the potential for riots in Kansas City. Because we're uh, two and a half miles away from downtown. Okay. And so they canceled. They said, oh, we have to find a different city. You know, it's funny about the Breonna Taylor situation. I am somewhat mixed about it and about this verdict today. Uh, it, it, first of all, to all those people who are rioting and to the people who shot cops, thanks. You're helping Trump win the election. Yes, you are. Okay. Yeah. You know, if you're going to hold a demonstration, keep it, keep it on the down low. Keep it decent, because Classic. this is exactly the fi- kind of fuel he wants to throw on the fire. He's going to point at those two cops getting shot tonight, and he's going to uh. have a field day with it. And there are some people, like the people who didn't use your B&B tonight, who are going to be so frightened 
that they're going to vote for Trump. So thank you very much. Okay, that's for starters. You know, uh, I. You know, if you did anybody hear the attorney general's thing today? Yeah. Yes. What did you think? What was your take on it? Here's what I here's what I took from it. He wasn't talking about a grand jury hearing. He was trying the fucking case. And that's not the purpose of a grand jury. A grand jury is supposed to look into a case, investigate, and determine whether or not it should move on to a jury trial. He virtually, through his speech, was making a case defending mm -hmm. the police. That's not his role, but... This is well, I mean, the way let's put it this way. I listened to what how he was talking about what went on, at least what they were able to piece together, because, you know, all the people in the street and the six of us weren't there. All right. So whatever we have to rely on is whatever evidence they find. Uh, in this case, he was saying and I get, get me if I'm wrong, that, in fact, the shots were fired at the police first. Okay. That happened today? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I hadn't heard that. Yeah. The shots were fired at the police first. What they did was then go into defense mode. Okay. Uh, uh, it's a question if they even knew Brianna Taylor was in that apartment, you know, yeah. because bullets were going through walls. All right. right. They think the one that killed her went through a wall, you know. <laughs> So they were really trying to subdue him rather than say, hey, there's somebody else in that apartment, too. Um, but let's get this straight. Yeah. We've charged a man for endangering the neighbors yes, that, that with I, his actions, yeah. but no charges toward anyone who actually shot yeah, and that killed does, the that, woman. That does not make Stop sense. Stop and think about that. That does not make sense. What happened to you can defend your home? What happened to the Second Amendment right to defend your home? Well, you're not, you're to begin, uh, one of the other things that was brought up here is they knocked and announced. Okay. The neighbors say he, they didn't announce. No, the neighbors said they did. He did. They, one. Had, the, they one. had one neighbor who heard it and said yes. that he heard the police knock on the door and announce it was the police. And the guy came out, I understand, in some kind of a defensive position, started shooting. He shot one shot, I think. And then they, of course, went into their defensive position, which is, in the case of police, very lethal because they got all the equipment they need, hmm. you know. But what I'm saying is, is that you have a, a balance you've got to find here. I mean... Yes, if these guys are guilty of something, then they should be taken to task for it and they should be have to suffer the consequences, all right? Mm -hmm. But we also, at the same time, cannot indict them because there's a mob outside saying lynch them, okay? So mm -hmm. you've really got to hit that balance, and that's the mm -hmm. thing I kind of was bothered by, that the crowd was really <clears throat> dictating, hey, we want to lynch these guys. We want these guys' heads on a, on a pike. And I don't know that that's the right attitude and the right posture to take, you know? Well, no. Can't have mob rule. Yeah. So the question is, how do we solve a problem like this? I mean, you could say that uh, the police were being protected by the attorney general, but that's not his job, okay? Um uh, the attorney general there, by the way, happens to be black. And at one point was talking about how his mother, uh, whenever she would send him out the door, was always worried about him. And then he started to cry a little, you know, at that. So I don't know that he was a guy who exactly wanted to uh, uh, take the position that they took. But he said, I simply gathered all the evidence, turned it over to a grand jury, and the grand jury made their decision. Somebody did ask them what was the makeup of the grand jury, and he said, I can't say that, which he's correct because a grand jury is, a, is supposed to be a rather secretive, right, as to who they are? Yes. Um, so that they, they can work without feeling of recrimination, 
let let's throw into the mix let's throw into the mix that the attorney general of Kentucky mm -hmm. did a speech at the Republican convention praising Trump and his law and order stance mm -hmm. so already he's in a he's in a strange position mm -hmm. you know um, in this atmosphere by time it gets to a grand jury and it's already happened I think it's already too late you know, like I, I think the accent can't be on the aftermath so much. It has to be on what can we do as a society to make these things not happen to begin with. Well, you know, it, yeah, uh, and that's a woulda, coulda, shoulda situation. Uh, we have not done anything about it. We've been terrible where that's concerned. We've been a country that's been remiss. And I'm forget about black people alone. This happens to white people, this happens to Hispanics, it happens to everybody. You know, it happens more proportionately to blacks in this country and perhaps Hispanics, people of color. Uh, but, uh, and it's probably disproportionate in those areas. But th we, we have, have had for years police departments that have been horrendous in the way they comport themselves. I've always disliked the police intently because of just the attitude they have is, I'm a cop, you're not, shut up, you know? And, and, and uh, I think because we've allowed them to get away with that, and we've allowed them to get away with that because they got the guns, um, yeah. you know, it, 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 it's happening. Now, in this case, I don't know where the truth lies, you know? But I do know that I don't want a mob to force people to make a decision that they don't feel they can make. And if that grand jury was comprised of an equal number of uh, people of color and people not of color, then I would feel a little better about the whole situation and that they work dispassionately to come to a conclusion. But we don't know that. But on the other hand, th none of the people in that crowd knows what went on that night. They only heard what went on that night. And so somewhere we've got to have the truth. And, we, and, and uh, you know, I mean, I, I just, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about it, okay? I just know that, I mean, I would love to just say, fuck the cops, you know? They got away with it again. By the way, it'll still go to the FBI, it'll still go to the feds. It could be charged as a hate crime, and all those guys could go to yeah. jail for years. Uh, so there's, there is that avenue. But William Barr is the Attorney General of the United States, oh. and he probably won't prosecute it. Yep. Ergo, you know, we've got, we, we really have a dangerous situation in this country. Because tonight when I read, two cops got shot in, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Kentucky. I went... You know, thank you for helping get Trump elected, okay? When are you people going to learn that the way we're going to solve this is by getting these bastards out of office? Do they know who shot the cops yet? Uh, I don't know. They have know. somebody in custody. Yeah. Have they said who they were? No. No. Not that I've heard. be a right-winger for all we know. Well, there oh, were right-wing militias who came to Kentucky for the festivities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, they they had them on on uh, on TV. There was about twelve of them walking around in their uh, outfits and long rifles and the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you As know, president of Antifa, you're going to get blamed, Alex. Uh, oh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I am the president. By the way, in case people haven't ever watched this program before, I am the president of Antifa. Uh, so uh, I just want you to know that. Uh, so you will never have a problem with whether Antifa exists or not, just come ask me, I'll tell you. I'll tell you when the meetings are, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got a little problem here with this. Uh, I'm having problems with my, uh, uh, there's some kind of little problem going on here. Uh, is it showing up in the picture? No. So, I don't know. <coughs> anyway, it's always well, something around here, you know, uh, the technology and so on. Uh, but no, it looks like I've, I've just got it's just the way this thing is comporting itself. So, uh, uh, I, yeah. so Michael Steele did an interview this afternoon. Um, mm -hmm. The former RNC 
chairperson who's part of the Lincoln Project, an African-American mm -hmm. gentleman. Yeah. And he said something I thought was profound and maybe after hearing it, obvious. He said, you know, um, this feeds into white stereotypes about people of color. If mm -hmm. they have stereotypes in mind already, this protesting, the, the shots that we're going to see tonight with fires on garbage cans and all like that are exactly feeding into what white people who are prone to stereotype people of color believe in, and it's just going to foster more of the same. And, you know, coming out of his mouth, I thought that, that that's profound and scary. Well, you know, I'm, I, again, I'm going to say what, you know, what I said to Dave Schuck here. Uh, because those people didn't want to do a, a B and B with him because they were afraid of that it was going to reach Kansas City or whatever wherever you live. And um, the fact of the matter is, remember this: black people, white people, are really frightened, you know, and they're going to do everything they can to protect themselves. All right, uh, and um, uh, you know. How can I put this? You you want to see Joe Biden elected. And you don't want to do anything that is going to feed into this fear that Trump has created. I mean, that, this is how fascism wins, okay? Yeah. Is by creating an atmosphere of fear. And guess who the solution is to the fear? Donald Trump. He is the, you know, he is the, the president of law and order. Yeah, great president of law and order. There are these riots, and he's president. How is he, you know? Uh, and, and on top of that, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, law and order, and he pardons Roger Stone? Yeah. You giving me a, uh, give me a break, you morons. Anyway, yes, uh, uh, Charlie. Yeah, y'all mentioned Michael Steele and the Lincoln Project. I mm -hmm. was just wondering. I haven't seen any new Lincoln Project ads this week. They actually put one out today. Oh, I have. Um, yeah. I forget what it entailed. Really? I saw it, and I, I, uh, my mind is just completely lost track of what it uh, was, but it was effective. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering, have they put out anything dealing with the, the Supreme Court stuff? Because uh, I think what I heard from one of the lefties, was that, that, that they were all of a sudden silent because they have a chance to have a, a conservative judge appointed and they don't want to mess that up. So all of a sudden they're going to ease off on Trump. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I, that's funny you say. I wondered something like that. I wondered, I, I just in my mind, I pictured someone like Joe Scarborough and I thought he's in an interesting position. He's been anti-Trump since Trump, yet at the the root of it, he's a conservative, and yep. he'll tell you that, you know, all day and all night. So he's in a strange spot. On one hand, he hates this manipulation, but I got to think somewhere down deep inside, he's going to be happy when he learns that a conservative has actually been, you know, appointed to the court. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this is the kind of conservative a conservative necessarily likes. Um to, you know, as I said last night, she had she's had seven kids. What a selfish bitch! <laughs> you know, I mean, come well, on. Scalia had eight kids. Leave some parking spaces for the rest of us, okay? Who had seven kids? She did. The judge that he's thinking about appointing. Yeah, I mean, with her kegels, oh, 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 ke ke kegels are a myth with her. Jeez, you know. But, you know, Antonin Scalia had eight kids. Wow. The Catholics don't believe in birth control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, uh, that, that, that's another question, you know. I mean, she had uh, that talk with my mom. <laughs> huh? <laughs> what? Here's the VIX, mom. Do you believe in birth control? <laughs> you wouldn't even know what the Here's the is. VIX. <laughs> she puts VIX on the nose that night. It's like a fetish. It's crazy here. <laughs> <laughs> It's bizarre. <laughs> I tell you. It is bizarre. There's no question it about it, Tony. But then again, we <laughs> always have felt you're bizarre. So <laughs> It's like I'm in the madhouse. I don't know what happened. Yeah. She repeats Re itself. It's the same thing. 
For a minute, Tony, mm. I thought you were telling us she used Vicks as birth control. I got confused there for a minute. Say <laughs> well, yeah. uh, like, what? I have to yell at it. We got to get an ears check soon because she's not hearing that good. Oh, really? Yeah, they're probably a little waxy. <laughs> What? What? It's like selective hearing. She hears what she wants. Yeah. This is always the part of the night where we have a little comedy relief with Tony. Yes. You know, and his. You know what I was laughing at, Alex? What you just said with Trump? Hmm? He wants law and order, right? But hmm. if he loses the election, he will not leave the White House. <laughs> yeah, right. That makes sense. So, such a contradiction of errors of this guy. Yeah. He's the most fucking corrupt president we've ever had. Yeah. Talking about law and order. Yeah. That's violating the law right there. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Well, somebody pointed out today, you go to a Trump rally, you have to sign a COVID waiver yeah. to go into the rally to hear that COVID is a hoax. You know? <laughs> How much sense does that make? Yeah. And by the way, if somebody wants to sue him and sign one of those COVID waivers, they can still sue him. Sure. Okay, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, what's that little piece of funny paper that they signed? You yeah, know? that's bullshit. That's the dry cleaner sign. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, right. not responsible for your garments. Yes, you are. But, you know, for a moment, let's 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 take into account what's going hmm. on down in. Uh, where is it? Uh, not Raleigh. Um, Louisville. Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, what's going on in Louisville, Kentucky tonight? Uh, this is just endemic of, of just everything that's going on now. This country is just going to hell. Oh, yeah. There is nothing good about it right now. Tell me some good news. This year is horrible. I hate it. I mean, already. tell me just it. one piece of good news. Anybody got? Yes, Dave, go ahead. Good news. I have two fantastic foster babies. Yay! I have a, my four and a half year old Alex. I think you remember me. Me maybe trying to introduce her, uh, Angela. Uh, she's uh, she's she's amazing. But two just a little bit over two months ago, we got a phone call and they said, "Yeah, you, we we need you to come into the hospital right away and pick up a kid." Um, he was four days old. Uh, mother had been using meth his entire time, but he's perfect. Wow. He, He's perfect, and he sleeps well, and he's well, he's healthy, and he has no outward conditions, and he's, he's loved, and he smiles, and he's, he's perfect. Well, That's and, a nice and, piece and, of news. And, and guess what? Very lucky, that kid. Oh, boy, yeah. He was born with meth crystals in his kidneys. Oh, wow. There was that much meth in him, that it was crystallizing in, in his kidneys. But, I mean, he is lucky because he found, you found it. Uh, I'm 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 lucky that I found him. him. No, are you, he's, he's uh, incredible. Have, do you have children besides this one? Well, you remember you remember uh, Emily. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Emily is now fourteen. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody comes on here and shows their kids. Oh yeah, she used to come in here when she was a tiny little thing a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <coughs> well, she's been replaced by uh, uh, by. Uh, Adrian, 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 Adrian Neary, uh, Neary nice. uh, who is our, our newest foster child on this show. He's not, she's not a foster child. but Mascot. Mascot. Mascot, that's the word. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, Brian, I don't know, where's Brian tonight? Mm -hmm. Usually he never misses a show, but, you know. Sometimes he can come late. Hmm? I got good news. Good news. Here we go. Good uh, news, folks. We're ready for uh, more good news. That was nice news, Dave. More good news. Finally, finally, the New York, well, finally, somebody's going to drag one of the Trumps into court to fucking uh, testify in New York. Uh, Eric Trump the, the <coughs> said, you got to fucking testify. That's yeah. that's Trump's special child, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> he's running. He's running the Trump business and they're, uh, you know, they're they're uh, they're investigating them, them for uh, tax fraud and all kinds of stuff. And um, they finally, finally, a judge stood up to them and said, "No, you got to go. You got to talk." And uh, he'll probably uh, take the fifth. I bet he takes the fifth. 
But that's political suicide. Well, he, if he takes the fifth, he can't take the fifth on one question and then take the fifth on another question. He's got to take a fifth on every question. Yeah, yeah. The minute he answers a question, he can't take the fifth anymore. Yeah. So, uh, you know, look, we're, we, Trump's got Teflon. You I don't, know? I don't think really. So. I mean, it's no, but it's amazing. Come on, it's going to catch up to him. I swear to God, it's the most corrupt president this country has ever had. It's the closest thing to a banana republic dictator yeah. that has ever run this country. And I'm sorry. Um, I I think it's. Um, I think he's gonna. Uh, in in the end, he's gonna. Um, he's gonna exile to. Russia or Uganda, like Idi Amin. <laughs> how is history, I mean, how is history going to look at this guy? You know? Yeah, how is, horrible. How? He's going he's gonna, to, um, when I mean, he gets out of office, I think they're going to prosecute him. I mean, I have to literally turn off the television set when he's on now. I can't take it anymore. Yeah, he's, I, well, I don't I've been there from day one. Huh? I was, yeah, no. What? What? I've been that since day one. During the primaries, I, after two or three of the primaries, I I, I I can't listen to this guy talk. He just lies. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I I never listened to Trump. Well, I always I hated Trump for over thirty years. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I never he... saw. Did anyone here ever see any of the episodes of the The Apprentice? No. No, no. I never watched. I, it. I didn't either. I never saw one episode of that. It was, I couldn't believe it was even on. For well, it was so the long. number one show in all of television, yeah. don't you know? I know. I couldn't believe that. Like, I mean, he's sitting there making fun of people, saying you're fired, and people are cheering that. That was right there enough for me never to watch the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like it was like watching Running Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What was Running Man? I don't know that. I didn't get Running that. Man was the Schwarzenegger movie. movie. Schwarzenegger, yeah. Yeah. What? What? Yeah, it's very a, old movie. Yeah, oh. it, it was all about a game show. Richard Dawson played the MC of the of the thing, and oh, uh, right. and, right. and, and uh, let's see, or oh, Jesse Ventura was in that too with him. Um, so, you know, I mean, <clears throat> in, in fact, that's interesting. In two movies, uh, you had Ventura and you had Schwarzenegger, and both these guys became governors. Yeah, think that's it right. Over. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, I just think you know it's it's uh, it's just horrible what's happened here, and and uh, I don't care uh, about any of you people uh, out there listening to us who are pro-Trump and think we're being uh, uh, nasty about this. But the fact is, uh, we're we're frightened for our country, you know, absolutely frightened. Here comes Bree, by the way, mm -hmm. on his iPad, because it says, be free iPad. Hi, uh -huh. hi Bree, how are you? Hello, good, how are you? Good, we're discussing uh, the same thing we always discuss. God, mm -hmm. I'll be glad if, if he's no longer president and we don't have to talk about him anymore, you know? Um, I, I, I'm just so sick of hearing about him. I just don't want his face yeah. on my TV. You know. Yeah, there's a burnout factor going on. I think. A what? You know, there's a burnout factor for sure. Oh, we. Uh, I, I'm yeah. surprised that he'll get one vote because even his fans should be burnt <laughs> out. You know. Well, but you know, you have to understand that you and I watch the media. I think we we watch things a lot more closely than Joe Sixpack, you know, and Jane Q. Public. They're trying to do, I mean, even right now, you know, I take this time out. Uh, it's, it's difficult for me. I have so many things to do. I think people are just busy with their jobs and, you know. What do you mean? What do you them. mean? There, there's, a, there's a COVID thing going on. They're not even going to work. <laughs> yes, Robert. Yeah. You know, I, I want to latch on to something Bree just said. I, I, for the last few months, come to the conclusion that Everybody says, well, how is it people believe Trump? I don't think it's a matter of that anymore. I really don't think Trump supporters sit there and believe or not believe every little thing he says. They just follow him because he's him and because they're invested in that. Well, I don't think they yeah. listen to policy. I don't think they listen to, oh, yeah, you know, gee, he might have fibbed here or, 
or he told Bob Woodward like, this, that. They're I, invested in him, mm -hmm. period. And and one point I'll make, I don't know if you caught this sound clip. There were I think there were governors who were talking to Trump and they were telling him, you gotta do this, you gotta do the science, you gotta do the science. And Trump said something, this was on C-SPAN, I saw it, very telling. He said, I don't think the science knows that. He said yeah, something yeah. to that effect. Yeah. And this is the this is the key. P these people, you know, it's they do, and, and to some extent they're right. Science doesn't know what COVID nineteen is still now. We don't know. So well, it's so not, Trump it's is not, operating it's not, on faith. You know, well, he's, that, was, that, that was the California guy. He was uh, it was he was in California uh, yeah. talking about the wildfires, and the guy that was talking to him was in charge of you know forestry or something, mm -hmm. and uh, he was saying you know. He, he was he was saying, you know, this is what's going on because of of climate change. And Trump said, well, I don't you know, I don't believe in climate. You know, Trump said it's going to cool down. Yeah, it's going to cool down. Yeah. You know, I was yeah. pissed off that that guy didn't just look at him and say, you are the most ignorant motherfucker. Yeah, right. I've ever lived. You know, that's what I would have said. I said. You are a stupid motherfucker. That's all there is to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Why Tony. Say that. Tony. Yeah, I guess I was thinking about the whole Trump fan base and me and my sister were walking, just getting a walk and we were in the neighborhood and I kind of came across people who were sitting out that I went to high school with and I wasn't really friendly with them, but I knew who they were and you yeah. knew they were Trump people because they had their flag out, Trump and stuff. I'm going to tell you something. I, was, I told my sister this too. I think Trump might have tapped into the my generation, the Generation X, because Trump was big in the 80s. And maybe yeah. it's like a snapshot to their counterculture. Can that be it? He was big in the '80s where you live, Tony, because you live in New York. And he, you think that wait, wait, wait. he wasn't big where I lived. So okay. you didn't really know who. But you think maybe he? We didn't into give a crap culture? about 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 Trump. The only time the American public finally got to know who Donald Trump truly was was when The Apprentice came on, and yep. he and he had a TV show. Yeah, I auditioned for The Apprentice. Did you really? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and uh, and I've had lunch. I've had dinner with Donald Trump Jr. So uh, I've had wow, direct contact with too. these people. So it's <laughs> harder for me to call them names. You know, when you meet someone, it you know it gets a little harder, and they play on that. I mean, but if you look, if you look over the years, the Rush Limbaugh, the Oliver North, the G. Gordon Liddy, the Sean Hannity, you know, there's a lineage here, and and I always put it back to the movie called A Few Good Men. And, and what's happening now is the ending to the movie changes. Jack Nicholson, you know, didn't know the judge. He didn't have the judge on his, if he had had the judge on his side, he wouldn't have gotten locked up, right? So, so they've learned from that movie and, and essentially you can't handle the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Brian, how are you this evening? Mm. Huh? Yeah, I'm not feeling too good, but Why? I have a lot of work to do, but I need a break, so. Yeah. I figure I'd come on the show for a little bit. Yeah. I'm the same. Yeah. I'm you're not same. feeling well tonight? Oh, I'm freezing. Huh? But you're freezing? Yeah. You did freeze. I'm producing two radio shows right now. You are? That are going to air around the world. Really? Well, I'm producing yeah. a TV show that airs around the world. <laughs> Anybody who wants to go on the internet can do a broadcast that goes around the world. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You well, this one your, you can go to Facebook affiliates. right now, click on live video, and start talking to everybody all over the world. So, what's the big deal, Bree? Because it has affiliates and, that are actual stations that have listener numbers, so it will reach you know into the hundreds of thousands. Are, are of you people. telling me that old-fashioned thing called radio, which is dying outside of the United States? It's alive and well. In fact, there are some communities in various countries where radio is the only thing they get. Um, in, in the northern Philippines, where I, I lived for two weeks, radio was the only consistently regular medium that you could have. The Internet, I mean, you had to prepay how, for how it. How long or, ago was that? Well, but yeah, that was six years ago. All right. But even, okay, I make my point. Back in 1980, today, some guy told me video killed the radio star. I don't know if it was true or not, but that's what he said. Actually, that was my theme song because that's exactly what happened to me. I was doing radio and everything like that, and all of a sudden I got really crazy about video, and we produced the first uh, video uh, network 
for for the internet back in uh, uh, what was it 1988 uh, I think it was um, excuse me not 1988 uh, 1997 1998 and uh, we did that and I always felt that that was my theme radio killed the video killed the radio star because I got out of radio and went into video you know Mm-hmm. And, but it, I, it wasn't ready. <laughs> I was there. I learned my big lesson. It's nice to be the guy who was the first guy to ever do it, which I was. Hey, Alex, uh, but, you mean for podcast? What? What? For podcasting? Well, for that podcasting was a different thing. This was an actual TV okay. thing. The so, podcast came a couple of years earlier. All right. So, Alex. I got to get your email or something so we can do that interview because we got to codify this in the journal of radio and audio media. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, it's, it's one thing we say it here on the show. It's another, if we document, I still have the program here. It's called auto Alex, which was made where people would, I would do a show and I would put it on my, on my line. I remember. Well, you don't have to go get stuff to, to Bree, That's distracting. Uh, that's distracting. Okay. Well, but this is the journal. But okay? that's distracting, I, and, and it really isn't germane to the discussion we're having anyway. We can talk about that. Well, it is time. if you're going to be historic. No. I, I remember when you did that, Alex, and you interviewed one time uh, Marilyn Chambers. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I remember yeah. that. Yep. Uh, that was one. Yep. But, you know, we, 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 anyway, I, what I learned, the big lesson that I learned was. Never be the first to do anything. Be the second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because nobody remembers the first. You know. That's the Chinese philosophy. That's yeah. like, always, uh, always Street. be the second. Philosophy. You know. That's like, what was the thing before Facebook? Uh, my friend my or something. My space. My space. Yeah. My space, my space, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing Wall was, Street. the thing was that. Friends. That I've had a lot of people you know, claiming, oh, I was the first podcast. We did it back in 2000. And I'm going, uh-uh. There was this podcast journal or something, and they wrote, the first podcast ever was blah, blah, blah. And they said in, I think, 2000, something like that. And I went, uh-uh. You want me to look up what the consensus well, is? Well, there, it, nobody will mention me. I t- uh, you don't have to look that up, Bree. And... I, we're, oh, we're, okay. uh, uh, well, but uh, but getting into this discussion is turning the show into a piece of crap. Okay, so let's let's just get off of <laughs> well, it. Well, see now you you always think that, but I don't think so. When I don't talk, care, about... Bree. I don't care. I'm running this show. And, All right. You know, I'm calling out your hypocrisy because there are other, I could go on. You, you get excited if it's television, you know. But with radio, you always try to avoid it. Like I don't know why. I don't try to avoid it. Radio's my mi- b- big love. You know, it was my first love. I no, wouldn't know it. Well, don't. Sometimes. Believe me, you know, I would rather do radio than do video. Okay, if I had to, if somebody said you can only do <coughs> one or the other, I would want to do radio. But radio doesn't exist anymore, Bree, and get used to that. Yes, uh, Tony. I asked my mother no joke about the Catholicism, about birth control mm-hmm. my father used protection she never took the pill she said it can hurt her we had a little comment we bonded tonight but i was actually wait, wait a minute wait a minute hold on a second you I'm and your mother you, are talking I, about I, condoms and this is relevant to the new supreme court justice you know something what what, what you don't want to ever ask your mother yeah. No, is how was no. I conceived? In other no. words, what were the conditions? I was definitely probably an accident. I think no, so. because when I asked my mother that question, yeah. because I'm curious, right? Under yeah. what conditions was I? She said, "Well, we had moved into a new apartment and the furniture hadn't come yet." Oh. And I'm thinking, I wanted to hear some kind of, you know, it was a moonlit night. We had a wonderful dinner. <laughs> he felt passionate. We made mad passionate love and. Next thing we know, you came along. No, that that wasn't what I got. It was we were waiting for the furniture, so we fucked on the floor. Alex, I still like when she came to visit you in New York and you had her on the couch, remember? No, th- would you please say that in a better way than I had her on the couch? 
No, but you were. What you said you had all the women coming over. She did. She gave you a problem. That's what you said. But my, I, she slept on my couch. Yeah, that's what you were meaning to that's say. That's I mean. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Being the good son, I let her use the couch. Yeah. I didn't give her my bed and sleep on the couch myself. Because I didn't want to make it too comfortable for her because I really wanted her to leave as soon as possible. Oh my God. Because she was ruining my game, okay? Oh, yeah. Nothing I, like I, a mother I, staying with you to cock block you. Oh, you know? yeah. And then she would have an opinion about all the women I dated. She says, oh, you're oh, a yeah. She called me, ready for this, you're a regular roué. Ooh. A chat. A churl. A, a, a roué. That's a churl. Howard. Huh? What is that? Howard. That's, Howard. That's, a, that's a guy who goes out with a lot of different women. He's a roué. A roué. French for street. Churl. You know? Uh, and uh, 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 I, I said to her, uh, and she says, I don't like the women you're going out with. I said, really? She says, well, I don't like that Barbara. I said, oh. Barbara Bergman, she, she's a very nice woman. She's, very, she's an accomplished artist. She, was a, she did airbrush and things like that, did book covers and so on. And her, her aunt and uncle were Alan and Marilyn Bergman, who wrote The Way We Were. Mm. He says, well, I don't know. I didn't like her. Okay. I said, who, anybody you did like is, well, I like that Rhoda. She was terrific. I said, really? You like her? He said, you know what she does for a living, Mom? She says, no. I said, she's a porn actress. <laughs> I had to find a stick to put in my mother's mouth so she wouldn't swallow her tongue. I mean, she was yeah. so apoplectic. You just don't want your mother staying with you for too long. So you don't make it too comfortable, you know? But anyway. Yeah, my, my grandfather was my hero, and I took care of him for about three years before he passed away. And I had my own one-bedroom apartment set up, and I had I had a lot of fun in that apartment. But then he, when he, I took care of him, then things sort of changed. And the same thing, he would say stuff about all the girls. He, why do you always go with the slant eye girls? And I said, <laughs> what? Yeah, you love. Yeah. That's what he said. I said, but but he loved this one girl, Lisa. And I said, but yeah, but what about Lisa? He goes, oh, yeah. And I said, well, she's Vietnamese. And he said, no, she's not like the other ones. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> One thing he always said was good. He would always say, so what about this girl? And I said, oh, yeah. I, I tell him, oh, yeah, I'm going out with this girl now. And he goes, oh, yeah, that's good. It's good you settle down, you know. And I said, then like next month, I said, oh, well, we broke up. He goes, yeah, I didn't like her anyways. Yeah. Well, no, but that, that's what you want to hear anyway. He was always supportive, yeah, no matter what. Penn Gillette, whenever I would break up with a woman, would say to me, I, well, I didn't like her anyway. <laughs> and I said, well, you hardly knew her. He said, yeah, but that's what you want to hear. He said, no, yep. nobody wants to hear, you mean you got rid of that nice woman? She yeah. was perfect for you, and you just... Dumped her? You got rid of her? No, they want to hear, I never liked her anyway. Yeah. So anytime you would tell him you broke up with somebody, he said, eh, better off, I didn't like her anyway. You know. By the way, um, slant-eyed woman goes in the Gabnet footnotes right next to eating chink. It chink, chink. <laughs> 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 He's old Italian, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, all that, I know, uh, I know. So comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know. So anyway, um, I just feel that we're. I, I just feel that we're really l losing it here in the United States. I think. Uh, what, what is the perception of us in the rest of the world, Bree, at this point? Uh, forget it. Really? Uh, yeah. I mean, you don't want to know. Just you don't want to know. I, I mean, Bree, I mean, by the way, is in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, I have to say that because you wouldn't know it. He looks as good as uh, Brian, who's in California, or Tony, who's up the street. And my, from my me. flag is actually UAE. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, don't yeah. let that fool you. But, but yeah, it's well, actually, in the UAE, it, it, it's so it's so crazy. It depends on who you talk to, but the average, it, it, it depends on who you talk to, you know. Mm -hmm. But but do you it, do you think that 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 the world is looking at Biden as then getting the U.S. back as a normal, 
Batman Nation again. I, I'll have to ask some more of the taxi driver. That I, I, I take think to, it's going to be get a better feel. I, I think there's going to be a problem there. I think they're going to feel more comfortable with Biden. Okay, they'll warm up a little more to the United States than they feel right now. But they're also going to remember that we elected this other guy. Mm -hmm. And that there is an yeah. election every four years in the United States. And the relationship of the United States to the rest of the world is dependent on the person who gets into office. And that America, as a nation, doesn't lately have a good record. Okay? Mm -hmm. We've put a bad taste in their mouths. Yes, well, but sure. If well, you look at Saudi Arabia, the UAE... Uh, you know, so countries like that, they like Trump. So they, you know, because he's manipulated. Yes, Putin, and they also right? kill, they also kill reporters. Charlie? Yeah. Yeah, the, um, oh, God. I lost my train of thought. You were talking about, the, oh, they can't trust us because they hated George Bush. And they thought we had regained our senses when we elected Barack Obama. And then they started to warm up to us again, and then we elect Trump. So they can't trust anything. Obama might have made all kinds of promises and treaties and stuff. Trump comes in and throws it all out the window. Well, the yeah. the point is that what we have, the problem we have is that how this country reacts to the rest of the world is dependent upon who's in office at the time. And something that that one president would do does not become codified. In other words, you have a president now who's trying to get rid of Obamacare. Well, that should be, once he got that passed by the Congress and so on, it should be codified, and nobody should question or take it to the Supreme Court to try and get it thrown out. Uh, you know, uh, but what, what are we going to do? Every four years, the country just changes, you know? Yes, yeah. yes, Bree. In a way, do you think that, like, I, I had this thought the other night, that the Democrats are kind of becoming the party that has a conversation with itself and can disagree. The Republicans are so monolithic that they're almost becoming a special interest for elites. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> the Democrat, Biden is really a Republican. I mean, it, it, in a way. And AOC is kind of like a Democrat, you know, and Trump is kind of like a, you know, Tea Party right. So no, the, the the Trump, isn't, the, Trump isn't right or left. He's been left yeah. when it suited him personally. He's been right yeah. when it suited yeah, him personally. Right. He has no political base. You know, he doesn't believe any of this crap he's doing. No. You know, he that that's what, he just wants the power. Yeah, he just wants and the power. I don't even think the Republican Party is a, is a political party any longer. It's just a uh, it, it's just a fucking mob ruled, uh, you know, um, cult of fucking personality i mean they don't even what do they stand for what are, what is their fucking, I, 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 i'll tell power. you i will yeah. i will i will put it all in a nutshell okay the nutshell is this mitch mcconnell the other day said well we've got enough votes now anybody that trump wants will get through yeah well, wait a minute hold on a second you don't know who that person's going to be you you haven't looked yeah. at their record you know, you're just going to blindly vote for anybody who Trump uh, puts before you, Madness. you know. And and secondly, what they have admitted, and they've they don't realize they've admitted it to the to the public to the rest of the world, is that Trump's not going to win this election, because if yep. they felt he was going to, they'd say, Fine. okay, we'll wait till after the election for the uh, Supreme yeah. Court. Uh, I don't think that they should. There should be a rule that they can't vote in between after an election if you're if you've been voted out you shouldn't be able to vote on that our we have so many issues you know in our democracy they've all been flagged we need to fix them there has yeah. to be a way but all, uh, yeah what, what, what i'm saying though is that that you know uh, it, it 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 is it, it's terrible that you know when a president Get something like Obamacare. Okay, it's the law, it's the law of the land now. I mean, what they want to get rid of Medicare? Do you know how old Medicare is? It goes back to Johnson. Okay, you're going to take that away. You want to get rid of Social Security after millions upon millions of Americans have paid into it, and they're trying to kill it because when he says I'm going to put a pause on payroll taxes, what's payroll taxes? It's That's your Social for. Security. You know, so he's trying to kill Social Security. That's been in, that's been here since Roosevelt. The yeah. great big piggy bank. Why does? Of course, he wants to get his hands on it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I read a report today that um, his business has made like $2 billion since he's been in, in office, you know, his business. And he was supposed to put that aside. You know, it was supposed to be, yeah. you know, put he's in a He's yet to show anybody his taxes. He is yet to yeah. put anything in a blind trust. He's done none of the things that you do when you become president of the United States. You know? Hopefully when this nightmare is over, if we survive it, you know, we'll, they'll be saying, just like after Nixon, they'll say, the good thing is the system survived, you know. And let's hope that. Well, I don't know if it's happened. going to, because, <clears throat> because we no, still no. have that same body of voters out there that could make the same mistake again, but just with a different face. Yeah. Uh, yes, Robert. You know, well, you know this, is just this, this is just something I've been toying around with in my mind. But one of the things we might have to go to Mm -hmm. so we might have to go to trying to get anything that happens in the Senate mm -hmm. approved by 60 votes, not 50 in many cases. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I think so is because it, it's rare that a party has 60 or more members, thereby forcing parties to have to coalesce and come together and compromise or nothing will get done. So long as it's 50 and it's going to be like a 53, 47 margin one way or another, there's oh, you're always going to run into things being done according to party lines. Yeah, and agree. the minority is going to get clobbered time and time again. How, how do we get this passed? You know, how do we how do we move this? To mean to get to that point? Yeah. What, what do we do? I mean, Mitch. Mitch did the thing with the nuclear option, right? So it, there, there are possibilities to get those things changed. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that Biden could win, that the Democrats could get the Senate and the House? Yes. And then in that case, you know, we have they they disagree with each other. They argue. They try to get votes. AOC does not blindly follow Biden. You know, so so maybe that it, it's, it's crazy to think about it. If one party rule is our future. And which one? Yeah, and I'm I'm not so sure that's the way that that's the way that's in the nation's best interest because then we're going to spend the first two years of every new administration undoing whatever it was that had been done yeah. previously mm -hmm. by the other party in power, and so yeah, it's going to be like the Keystone. Uh, and Jeff, Jeff Jeff hasn't yeah. said anything yeah. tonight, much tonight. Let him say right. something here. Well, I. I think we have to look at a little bit about the history. When it was the, the whiskey problems, the liquor problems, where the whole country Prohibition. Said, yeah. Prohibition. And then, I don't know what it was, another 10 years, they changed it again and went exactly back. Well, they realized that Prohibition was a bad... You see, Prohibition was not a bad idea when they went for it because uh, there were... You, you had people drinking in this country like you wouldn't believe. I mean, we have never had an alcoholic problem, alcoholism problem, as big as it was prior to Prohibition in this country. Prohibition came along, and it dried the country out enough so that it never came back to where it was, to where there were like, you know, three bars on every street, you know. And, mm -hmm. and um, you have to remember the Prohibition, you know, what group? actually push prohibition it was, it the, was the suffragettes yeah the women right yeah because the women want, did not like demon rum and what it was doing because husbands would spend their whole paychecks right. on booze or <laughs> they would come home and beat their wives or whatever and so they made uh, the suffragette movement got its biggest push from women who wanted prohibition yeah. so the two if you look at them one came first Suffer uh, the uh, right to vote, and then s slow, uh, followed by next uh, prohibition, which seemed like a good idea at the time, but it turned out to be the worst uh, problem. It was know. the mafia, an organized crime. Yeah, yeah. You can't legislate against people's vices. It, it's rarely going to work. I mean, that's why marijuana is finally coming to being legal after all these years. It just doesn't work when you try to, I mean, gambling, uh, liquor, prostitution, those kinds of things make it it's very difficult to legislate against those because they're things that people want. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. So anyway, it's uh, it's amazing. But uh, so, how you feeling, Bree? I'm not Bree. Brian, you you do look like you're not feeling well today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just wasn't feeling good, and then I have some a big project I had to finish tonight. So just uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I needed a break, so this how, is how good. much are you, how much are you working from home, and how much are you going to work for? <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to work to about six a.m. and then I come home about noon or one o'clock. But then I still have meetings because we have like India, we have meetings in the morning, and then we have yeah. So it's it's wow. it's all day. Wow, so it's unrelenting. Yeah, but, yeah, and and it's all at once because we have so much funding right now to open up these new factories for COVID and for fluvid mm -hmm. and everything. So. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy. I mean, wait everything minute, they wait, talk wait about the testing, you know, the testing they want to ramp up. And, uh, you know, they say that's one of the three points. This whole thing is mm -hmm. to contain it and to, to do the testing. But, but the thing is, you just used the term. You used the term I've not heard. Fluvid. Yeah. Yeah, that's our new one. We just started building that about a month ago. What? So we're trying to get everybody to transfer that. Because right now they have to do flu, and then they sort of see if they have a normal flu. Or if it's not, then they have to do the COVID test. But Wow. How are we going to yeah. tell the difference between the two? I guess if you've had a flu shot, you probably don't have the flu. Yeah, I don't know. My friend's a scientist there. Yeah. And... Uh, oh. He's the mad scientist. He's got the curly hair and <laughs> crazy guys. They say like one of the big uh, symptoms is if you can smell things. So like maybe you get, uh, you know, some of uh, Tony's cooking for his mom there and put that in front of him. And can you smell this? No, it's a, you lose your sense of smell. Yeah. <laughs> no, you do. You lose your sense of smell and yeah, taste. Taste is the other one. You mean so as, as, as long as I go to the bathroom and have what I call a, a rather pungent dump, I'm happy because I can smell it and I don't have COVID. That's my COVID. Oh, so test. there's Alex Bennett's uh, my, advice. My, well, it's, my co it's my when COVID. You go to the test. toilet, take a big sniff. <laughs> well, you know, rel you go to the doctor. <laughs> relaxing though. I, I've been playing like the 1930s like big bands my grandfather i used to listen to all, all the summers i spent with him so i with the 34 cadillac i'm building i've been working on that a couple this couple weeks and i've been playing some ben cosby crosby and uh some other stuff pretty uh entertaining yeah yeah so anyway so uh, and then you, you must have with your father you must have been listening to that all your oh yeah childhood oh, for yeah. sure right yeah yeah, I mean, I, I was raised on a lot of that music. I also listened to it. Well, you got to remember, I was listening to radio when I was like five or six years old, and that was the kind of music that was on radio. Right. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, Crosby was the biggest star in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right? Nothing came close. In fact, if you can believe it, so was Mickey Rooney at one point. Mm. Ugh. <laughs> Who was the singer? Huh? He sing? No, 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 but he was a big star. He was a yeah, movie star, As yeah. an actor, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. under yeah. the studio system. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was uh, him and Francis Gum? Yeah, yeah right, Judy yeah. Garland. Yeah, yeah. Right. discovering songs like "The Very Thought of You," you know, so like right. those type of songs I really like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I can't. I to this day cannot get enough Sinatra. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, listen, we're running out of uh, time here. Oh, yeah. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We enjoyed it. Charlie, thank you. Thank you, Robert, Natalie, always uh, always a troublemaker. Uh, yep. uh, 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 John Larkin, thank you. John, Dave Shuck. Tony, hey, always mm -hmm. like you for comedy relief. Uh, Bree, and your iPad, thanks for joining us tonight. And I do love Thanks radio. For having I do love radio. It's just it doesn't exist anymore. And Brian Neary, thank you so uh, so much. Feel better. More work. Oh, uh -oh <laughs> I thought you were grabbing Adrian. <laughs> no. He's got to get Hopefully back to work. Sleeping. Hopefully we'll see yeah. you tomorrow night, Brian. Um, yep. Anyway, I want the all of you, if you will, uh, to please uh, give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go. That's our citizen panel for this evening. Uh, and that's uh, that's what all she wrote, okay, for our citizen panel. There'll be another one convening next with uh, Jack Bishop. He does it using Skype, and that would be Gabnet Live if you're using Skype. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow night. 
same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there. And for your fellow person, wear a mask, damn it, please. <laughs>